Well, um, let me start by saying that uh, my name is uh, Adibu Ibrahim Abubakar, a professor, retired professor of public finance from Mahonobila University. And I'm presently the Emir of uh, Malaysia Baroba, but first class Emir in Kwara State. Uh, I was born in here in Malaysia Baroba on January 14th, 1948. My father then, later of course, was, uh, was the headmaster in a place called Aguara, it's in Niger State now. But incidentally then too, he was actually a student uh, at the famous Katsina College, that's Katsina Trading College. So he went in, in service and that's when I was born. Well, I spent my first five years at the year or so, or thereabouts, maybe about six years, here in Malaysia. Uh, after that, by chance, by uh, some life-changing coincidence, uh, one of my uncles, a late uncle, came and he said, I should go and live with him in uh, Zaria, and of course start school there. So that's how I moved to Zaria uh, in 1954. And it's been, it's, it's, uh, it's been a journey. It actually defined my life, my virtually everything. Because I've been there on and off, on and off, uh, till uh, I would say 2014, 20, so about 60 years really. Not that I was staying in one place, but I could say on and off I was resident uh, in the area. Initially, of course, we were in Samaru, the area of Samaru. I guess he was working, I'm not too sure now, with uh, IAR. Because I now realized that at that time AB wasn't there. So I was working with the Institute of Internal Agricultural Research, which was established in the 20s. Uh, so we were there. I started primary school there in Zaria, in a school they called St. Peter's Practicing School in 1955. St. Peter's Practicing School uh, was actually the only primary school in, in uh, Samaru. So it's a, it's a question of whether you like it or not, that was the only place to attend. So I was there till uh, 1958, uh, when he was transferred to uh, Kaduna. Of course, we had to move along. I started, I uh, joined uh, another school there, uh, St. Joseph's Catholic Primary School, just close to the central market. Uh, I was there and I passed out then it was a seven year program. Uh, passed out in uh, 1962. Now interestingly when I passed out from the school I couldn't go further. Uh, couldn't uh, proceed to a secondary school or teacher's college. Anything post uh, primary. So then it wasn't a big deal. Again, someone might ask, ah, why not? Why did it work? In fact, I, even myself, I don't know. I think that's how fate wanted it. Uh, that's how fate wanted it. So my uncle got me a job in the Ministry of Works, Northern Region Ministry of Works, uh, and their regional mechanical workshops. I was uh, recruited on a daily basis. Uh, daily paid basis. Uh, I was a clerk or a checker, they called it like, not really a clerk. I wasn't uh, qualified to be a clerk. So I I was there uh, till, uh, of course, the of course the events from 1966 and so on that led to the Balkanization of the country into 12 states. So there wasn't one north as we used to know. Uh, we now had six states. And of course I fell into Kwara. Uh, so when the Interim Common Services Agency, they call it ICSA, the Interim Common Services Agency was 
the body that was uh, uh, created to take care of the assets and liabilities of the six northern states. So up to 1968, 69, they are still operating from 1966. Uh, so they said people should be posted, some people posted to their own states, some people posted to other places. Um, again, FIT uh, had a very interesting part to play here. As at the time, uh, people were deployed. I wasn't qualified to be deployed because I was a daily paid staff, which was, again, if you look at it by hindsight, it's fantastic for me. So luckily, the, the ministry, the government then helped us, those in my own category, to secure appointments. And I was appointed and the Ariwa Textiles Limited in Kaduna, North Kaduna South, uh, as a Kadex clerk. That's again in the stores. Now, luckily, say, uh, I grew up in a fairly cosmopolitan environment. And uh, a lot of my class, most of my classmates were either Igbo or Yoruba. And we lived in Kaduna. So, most of my classmates, of course, I don't know very many that didn't go straight to secondary school. But again, at that time, I was earning six pounds or seven pounds. When they came on holidays, we used to move around. But then I started thinking one day that ah, this child will soon finish secondary school. And uh, when uh, they come to work where I am, they will be my bosses and so on. Uh, so I started uh, private tuition, a correspondence initially. Uh, I think 1967 or 68, correspondence training. Uh, then, uh, 68 or 69, I registered formally for extramural classes in the Polytechnic, Kaduna, present Kaduna Polytechnic. They used to have, the, where the present School of Business used to be Staff Development Center. Staff Development Center was College of the Northern Region. and. As the Igbos were moving during the Civil War, I think government thought it necessary to have a program that, to train people to pass their GCE and so on and so forth. So they started this evening classes. And luckily for me, I enrolled. I enrolled, although I had been reading before. So by 69, I told my elder brother, late elder brother now, and an uncle of mine, that is Sabi is still alive uh, in the area of Ibanara. They were sort of two that I looked up to, particularly my uncle, the present area of Ibanara, that said, I'm going to sit for this old level. So that's after one, two years of study. I'm going to sit for this old I said, ah, look, why do you want to why in such a haste? People who even attend regular secondary school, spend five years, they have failed this thing. But, and I felt convinced that I could, I could make it. Uh, so, uh, 1969, I sat for my O-levels, five O-levels. I think, of uh, uh, English, mathematics, economics, geography, I think history of, of government. And lo and behold, at that time it was, University of London GCE, so it didn't waste any time. Within two months, the results came out, and before I, I passed all the subjects, but which was up to today, to me is an incredible thing. But that's I believe that's how Allah wanted it. So I was so convinced that this is so it's this easy. Immediately I got my results. I registered for A levels, that's advanced levels, in uh, the same place. Uh, again, 1970, end of 1970, uh, November, I sat for the A-levels. By January, the results came out, I had passed three A-levels. That was the equivalent to what they call HSC, Higher School Certificate, which at that time, I think up to 70-80% of the people who sat for it failed. So I passed that. So I was good to go, because the next thing was to go to the university. And I had this uh, very interesting teacher, 
who have got became my mentor, my friend, and so on. I did it as if. Incidentally, he died not too long ago. He was the pro chancellor of the University of Illinois. We met, we never knew before. He was teaching us, and he just took an interest in me. So I passed. Uh, he was somebody I admired so much. He read economics in the University of London. So of course, without question, I said I was going to read economics. And of course, I read economics. Uh, I got at that time there was no jam, so you applied direct to the school you wanted. I got admission into ABU and uh, University of Ibadan. Again, University of Ibadan, out of curiosity, really, out of a spirit of adventure. That's how I got to. I got I even applied to University of Ibadan. Again, when I, with the admissions, I contacted the uh, IDDSV, contacted my late father. Where do I go? And they said, oh, you've lived all your life here in Zaria, Samar. Why not go somewhere else? So that's how I went to University of Ibadan. I think it was a fantastic decision, a choice. I was there, read BSc Economics, uh, graduated in 1974. In June 1974, I made a second class lower. Uh, of course, I wish I could have done better. But I went in there, I wasn't too serious again, you know. So after, after uh, graduation, I served NYC in Ibadan, uh, Minister of Industries. Incidentally, we were the second set of NYC, second set of NYC. So uh, the first set was 73, 74. I once said it was 74, 75. So I served uh, in Nagodi, uh, NYC, as an investment officer also. Now after that, after that I took off appointment with uh, the Kwara State Government, uh, and the planning, uh, Ministry of Economic Planning, as a planning officer. But let me also mention that I think I got four or five jobs at that time. Got four or five jobs at that time. I got a job with Barclays back then. I think that's Union Bank now. I got a job with Kwara State Poly. Poly. This would be Kwara College of Technology or so. And I got a job uh, with a company in Kaduna. But again, there was this pressure by all people that you should be here. Uh, that, that year, I was the only graduate from what you now known as Barote. The next one was in Kayama. So we were only two in that year. And I, Alhamdulillah, when you look at these things today, even here in Asia, every year you have many graduates from even just one house. But that year, I remember, uh, I was the only one. So there was this pressure that I should be, didn't have people and so So that's how I was there. Within well, less than a year, they said I should attend a program, a training program, uh, University of Ife at that time. Uh, the, it was a UNDP program to train young planning officers and so on. So I then went to university. It's a postgraduate diploma in development, uh, economic, development economics and planning. So I attended that uh, one year. Came back to Lauren. And uh, somehow I, did, I wasn't getting the type of uh, satisfaction, job satisfaction, I thought I should get because uh, I was a very inquisitive person. So that's how my journey to back to Zaria started. I was employed then at ABU, the Institute of Administration, they used to have a department they called Department of Research, Management Research and Consultancy. So I was employed there as an assistant economist. I was there. Uh, from there, of course, I, uh, I got an opportunity to go to Harvard University. They had a program. The program was for planning officers, central bank staff across the world. It was extremely, extremely competitive thing. Uh, so I got there. It's, it's a master's program. They called it in public administration because it involved so many people, uh, so many backgrounds. But the essential thing is that for me, my own specialization was. Uh, economic policy and management. Today, many years later, people like El Rufai attended that program. So many other people, at least prominent people. In fact, the least prominent today, out of those who attended that Harvard KSG program, the least prominent were 
I believe I'm in this problem, but I'm doing like, so I attended that, came back, and uh, registered in the Department of Economics in ABU, uh, eventually for my PhD. So I, although it took quite some time, on and off, on and off, uh, so I, I did the program. But, but meanwhile, I was teaching in the institute, and because I was teaching basically economics, uh, development economics, public finance, and quantitative techniques. Uh, we had, they started a program, federal government sponsored program on trading local government officials. Uh, but given my own background, I was trading largely, I was teaching largely in public finance. Uh, and of course, I did teaching the law economics and quantitative techniques and so on. Then uh, there, I found it so exciting because I was teaching in the Department of Public Admin as well. And also in business, they had economics programs there. In fact, when I started uh, in uh, Congo, I was teaching economics to all first year students in accounting, business administration, public administration, and so on. So I stabilized myself in the institute. Uh, I became head of the department uh, two, two or three times or so. But the interesting thing I still feel happy about. In the Institute of Administration, that, well, that's the Faculty of Administration, where you have accounting, business, public admin, later economic, oh, sorry, development studies, local government development studies. I was head of department in local government development studies twice. I was head of department in public admin once, and I was head of department in business admin once. I don't think anybody had that, has that record that I had. Again, it's just coincidences. Um, uh, well, why, why in AB, of course, I had a lot of exposure. I'm just trying to summarize. Uh, I had a lot of exposure. Uh, we had consultancy. Because as initially, that was my own concern, my interest anyway, that if it took me to ABU. I wasn't really too interested in this regular lecturing and so on. Uh, so I was doing the lecturing. I started uh, largely general republic finance. Uh, but then we uh, part participated in a lot of consultancy. I did, we did consultancy for uh, UNDP, for UNICEF, for the World Bank, uh, and this European D D D DFI. DFI. Uh, so we did that, and my, my interest uh, at that time. Uh, as I've said, initially I wasn't too keen on this academic thing, but eventually I got involved. And so along the line, all, all these things were happening. Uh, in no time I became, I changed from being an uh, economic consult uh, consultant to lecturer, regular lecturer. And so my promotion was based on lecturer, based on publications and so on. Uh, within a few years, to cut all this short, I became a professor. To me, honestly, it wasn't a big deal. I did a lot of work for, this, for the university and for our department and faculty. But the, the consultancy aspect was both for the university and for my personal self. Uh, I remember 2001 or so, uh, I was employed, given an appointment by the World Bank, not employed, as lead consultant economist on what they call state, study on state finances, public finances of states, in the, particularly in the Northern region. It, it was a national program, but that was in charge of state, at least four states in the North. And I did that for a very, very long time. You know, the, you know this World Bank programs, they stopped, they start another version, and I was with them all through. And, uh, Again, as I said, we did for UNDP. Uh, so, while for the UNDP and a lot of the rest, I had the opportunity, of course, of traveling uh, abroad so quite a number of times so, uh, in India, Bangladesh, uh, and so on and so forth. So, uh, again, in addition to all this, I had uh, public service appointments, particularly in Quara. 
I had appointments in Kwara. Uh, and they are too long now for me to remember, but let me try. Uh, I started with the Civil Service Commission. I think that was during Adamata's time. Uh, I was there. And uh, later on, uh, I was appointed chairman of Kwara State College of Education. I don't remember the dates now, but I'm trying to talk about the order. Uh, after that, I was appointed chairman of Kwara State Poly. Uh, after that, I was appointed member of the Judicial Service Commission, again all in Kwara. Uh, but the big one later was being a member of the Kwara Planning Committee. I was a member of the Planning Committee of Kwara. Shaba Naifi Agi was the chairman. Oba Professor Oba was a member and so on. So after the report of the committee, uh, the governor set up uh, an implementation committee. I think that was in the color. And I was also made a member of that implementation committee. Now when we finished the implementation committee, uh, we have decided now this is going to be, this is going there. Uh, then there was, to recruit uh, you know, principal officers and so on. The initial recruitment, staff recruitment, uh, they decided to, instead of having a full-fledged council, decided to have uh, an interim council of the university. Again, I was a member of the interim council. We were the people who interviewed the vice chancellor, uh, registrar, everybody at that time. Uh, after that, again, they now said, okay, the place is ready, good to go. So they needed a full-fledged council. And I was again a member of the council, that council, which means from the planning committee up to uh, the, how many years I was there, you know, uh, in Kwasu. So that was a very big uh, uh, opportunity for me. Uh, along the lines, I did a lot of work for the federal government. I remember 2010, we had, uh, that was just towards the end of when Omar uh, Yaradua was tenure. I was appointed as one of the national experts on uh, what, uh, wage review. And wage review. Uh, they called it, I don't remember the technical word they gave it now. Uh, it was an interesting title. But basically what it involved was wage review. And I had the opportunity of leading the team, a team that traveled most of the United States, discussing with uh, government, governments and so on for their inputs. After that, we now decided that it was ne necessary to go around the world. Uh, so I was the chairman of the Southeast Asian team. We visited India, uh, Malaysia, Singapore, and Indonesia all on this uh, uh, assignment. It was a very interesting assignment. And late 2010, we submitted a report. Interestingly, a number of it was implemented. A lot of it was implemented. So I had that, you know. Uh, of course, after that, I was, okay, something I forgot, the chairman of NNDC in Kaduna. Uh, NNDC, the name now is NNDC just the new Nigerian development company. For well, NNDC started uh, as a Northern Nigerian Development, uh, what do you call it now? Northern Nigerian Development Commission also, not company. Uh, Northern Nigerian Development Commission. So, corporation. corporation, thank you, thank you. So, that's, uh, so in two, uh, 2006 or so, I was appointed chairman of the board. I was there, uh, it's a four-year training. After my first four years, the state governors decided I should continue for another four years. Uh, luckily, I had just, I was just finishing my second four years when the challenge to, the challenge to take up the, my present appointment. So it just came in the nick of uh, the So I was in NNDC, and I, I, I found it too a very interesting very useful uh, sojourn. Um, there are so many other things I did, but I don't want to bore you with the 
sad story of my life. Uh, so, so that's how today uh, we are here. I came in as a second class in me, but uh, we were uh, promoted, appointed, or promoted first class. Uh, uh, 2015 or 16, no, 2016, and that's where we are today. <laughs>